Hey everyone, uh, back again here. I'm gonna actually show you how to set up a user in Active Directory and then uh, apply a new, uh, attach a computer onto the directory that you have. Currently what I'm on is on a Windows Server 2012 and I'm gonna be going through there. Um, the first steps that we're gonna do is setting up a user. So I'm gonna actually go into the Server Manager, click Tools, and then find Active Directory, Users and Computers. So what I'm gonna do first is go into my directory, gmscripts.local, uh, Active Directory. I'm gonna actually make a new group here uh, under users, since I don't wanna set it directly in, and we're just gonna name it test, test-trial. Uh, so I'm gonna name this group. And I can make it domain local, but I'm just gonna make it global here. And you can change how the group is set. Now if I go back in here, you should find it, trial. All right. So that's the group that I'm gonna attach this user to. So I'm gonna go new, user. Now okay, we're gonna make this user, I'm just gonna name it Garrett, last name, I'm not gonna worry about. Okay, so now I need to log in for my user. And I'm just gonna make it Garrett. Now, uh, depending if you have a large domain, you might make it like uh, b.garrett or uh, Garrett, oops, I spelled Barrett. Garrett B. Or you might spell out their whole name. It's up to you how you want to do it. In this case, I'm just going to do Garrett. Uh, what you see down here is user login name uh, pre-2000. Uh, you're probably not going to hit the 2000 anymore, but they still have it. It's still included. As you can see, it just changes. It's another way to call the name. If I click Next, now I need to set a password for myself. Uh, set up a simple password here that I can remember. All right. And then you have a couple options after setting up a user. User must change that next login. I'm the user being uh, logged in or setting up, so I don't need that. Now, if you get a new user, you might set a default password, tell them the password, have them change it, and then they know it. You don't. Uh, I can make it where they can't change it. Password never expires, and account is disabled. In case you want to set up a user but not enable it yet because that user hasn't came in, so nobody can log in, or you don't know what permissions they need, you can disable it at first. And actually, I'm going to disable that first, kind of just show you how to unlock that. I'm going to click Next, then tell, tell me all my settings I just set in. Click Finish. Okay, so now I have my user here. Now, this arrow that you see is kind of small in, on the screen, but there's an arrow on the user icon that's down. That means that's a, a disabled user. Now, we can go right here and enable account. Boom, boom. I've been enabled. That arrow will disappear. Now, before I switch over to the computer after setting up my user, I want to kind of just show you... Uh, how to set up uh, the DHCP if you have a DHCP pool because what you're going to need to do is make sure that computer that you're going to be attaching to the domain has its primary DNS pointed at the server. In this case, I'm using DHCP on the same server here, so I'm just going to go into that server, uh, go to my IP version 6. My icons show it's down, but it's actually not. Go to my scope. Now, uh, if you're first setting this up, uh, I'll make a tutorial on how to set up DHCP, but uh, if you already have a scope already set up, you need to make sure your DNS is set up correctly. So we're gonna go down here. Uh, now I'm in scope options. So I went in my scope. Uh, went in, yeah, my scope is basically my IP range. Uh, went into my scope, went into my scope options, and then there's this option right here, DNS service. If you do not see that option, right click and configure options. Find DNS in the listing, and then make sure you add in the server's IP as the primary. So that'll be the topmost. If I Say if it was at the bottom like this, I would collect it and then click up. Then close apply and, and then click OK. Now after you have all that set up, the, ser the actual computer that you're connecting to the server to set up that user and attach the computer onto it should actually pull DNS correctly. And you might have to do this through like a sonic wall or some type of router in some case. And just to show that it's actually pulling correctly, I'm going to go to config all. As you see right here, I have my DNS servers. It's a pointing to the server right there. So that means the server should be set up correctly that I can actually connect to it. So we're gonna click Start, click Computer, click Properties. I'm doing this on a Windows 2000. On a Windows 8, you're doing, if you wanna right click the uh, Start icon, you'll see a menu pop up. You click System, it'll send you to the same uh, page as this. Now we're gonna go to Advanced System Settings here, which you can actually choose Change Settings, but I accidentally clicked Advanced and go to computer name. Now once you're in here, there's two options to attach to a domain. You can manually do it through change or you can do it through network ID. I recommend doing it through network ID. This will guide you through all the steps to set up a user and set them on the domain. So, uh, I kind of skipped through that. This is just asking, is this a home computer or is this gonna be on a business network? This is gonna be on a business network in this case. And since I do have a domain, 
I can attach to it. Uh, if you don't have a domain, it'll attach you to a work dom uh, work group. That would be this bottom option. But we're going to be using the top option today. Okay, and now it's just going to tell you everything you're going to be going through, what you might need. All right, so right here, this is where I see a lot of people mess up, is they set in administrator and then the password for the administrator. This is not what you do here. This is where you set up the primary account that's going to be logging into this computer. So in this case, it's going to be Garrett. And now I need to set in Garrett's password. All right, now the domain name is how it's going to be referenced on this computer, how it's going to show it. I want it to show as GM scripts. Nothing else, just GM scripts. Now I'm going to click next and say, what do you want this computer name to be? Now the computer name is recognized through Active Directory. So if I go back to the server real quick, open up my server, there's actually a folder called computers. It will list up in there and give you the name of that computer. So you can control group policies on that computer instead of through the just the user. Now, uh, computer name, we're just going to go temp windows PC. I'm fine with that. And domain GM scripts dot and we're just going to go GM scripts real quick. Click next. Now, right here on this window that just popped up, it's asking you for domain username and password. This is administrator login that you're going to be doing. Now, if you have a specific account, instead of using username administrator, let's say your own account to set them up, and you have the permissions to do it, you can do it that way. But in this case, I haven't set up a user for that, so I'm going to use administrator. I'm going to set in my password. Oops, I already mistyped my password here. And then I need to set in the full domain, so that's gmscripts.local. Now, sometimes if you set GM scripts in, since I have the .local on there, it might automatically find it. But to be safe from the start, I'm done set .local here. Click OK. Now, this process can take a little while sometimes, so we're going to see how fast this goes here. Okay. So... Mine actually connect to the group. What it just did is it tried to connect to the domain. Uh, if it failed at connecting to the domain, it would have popped up another error saying, this is not found, da, da, da. Please try another login credentials. I found the domain. So upon finding the domain, it will pull down the group policies for basic computers, the default policy. Since I haven't man changed anything there, all the settings get pulled over. Now, next thing, okay, add the following domain user account, da, da, da. Click next. Okay, now what do I want Garrett to be? Do I want him to be a standard account or administrator? Now, administrator allows them to install, change things, as you can see right here. It also means uh, the settings that you send uh, group policy, the default or specific to the machine, you can change what the administrator does in a standard account. And you know, standard account can't do really anything other than run programs. Now, there's other options like backup operator, and I'm not going to go into details on these. There's just other options that you can do. I'm going to go administrator here because I want to make Garrett be able to administrate the computer by installing software and everything. And I'm done. Click finish. Click OK. Now, as you can tell, it said, oh, you don't need to restart the computer. So we're going to go restart now. So while that's restarting, let's go back over to the server here and let's make another user. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So new user. Now, I want this user to be, I'm just going to say my last name, Bailey. And I want the username to be Bailey. Oop. I uh, set in the password for him. And we're going to make it where I don't have to change my password. Uh, user cannot and never expires right now. Click finish. Okay, so I created my new user. Now I made this group over here. It's called test trial. Now let's go and attach some people to it. So we're going to go properties. Members. You see no members on it. So we're going to go add typing Garrett. Check name, found it instantly, click OK. Go here again, let's go Bailey. Check names, I attached. Now the reason why I created a second user is so that I can show you how to attach a user that has, if the computer's already on the domain, how to add that user onto, the dom onto that computer. So in this case, my computer's still starting up here. And the reason why I created a group is later on, on my, uh, further on on my tutorials, I'm gonna actually show you how to change group policies and you can apply it to a specific group here. Now, I'm here. Since I'm remoted in, it's kind of hard. So I'm going to go like that. Now type in my password. And you see it's loading in. If it fails, it'll actually give me a password. Currently, no logon server available. I'm pretty sure the DNS did not pull correctly. Let's try this again. Actually, let's try this here.
Okay, so what happened? I just ran into is case sensitivity. I had a capital user of Garrett instead of a lowercase user of Garrett, and that can come into an issue. In this case, that's what I did, because if I double-click my user right here, and I can go to account, everything is in lowercase. What I did is attach with uppercase, so that will run into an issue sometimes. Uh, I don't know if it's been countered or found a fix for that. I haven't tried. But just be heads up, if this is all lowercase, you need to set it lowercase in here. As you can tell, I set it uppercase, cause an error. Now I'm just waiting for the computer to kick in here. Might take a few because now it's reloading the properties. Uh, when it reboots, it grabs from the server. Now it's grabbing the user, so now it's grabbing the user policies, if there's any specific things, along with preparing the d uh, desktop. Now there's other settings you can change. Uh, desktops can be pulled from a file server instead of actually stored on that specific computer. So that's when you go to another computer and another computer and you see the same icons on the desktop or your documents are the same. Okay, so once I'm all logged in, I wanna add Bailey onto this computer. So I'm gonna click start here. I'm gonna go to control panel. Now once I'm in control panel, I wanna go to users, so user accounts. Uh, give other users access to the computer is what you wanna go to. All right. So this is a new window. This wasn't on default of Windows. You don't usually get this window. This happens usually when you're on a domain. So now what we're going to need to do is add a new user. So we're going to click Add. Now we need to find the username. We're going to go Bailey. Domain is GM Scripts. Now if you don't want to go that way, type it in like that. You can go Browse. And you can go Bailey. Check name. Boom, found. Or you can click Advanced. Click Find Now and then search the directory. Now in this case, I'm already adding Bailey, so I'm just gonna click OK. Bailey's already added, click OK, click Next. Now would I wanna make this user? Uh, do I wanna make him a standard or administrator? I'm gonna make him standard, click OK. So now you'll see the user, what permissions he has on this computer. So basically domain is what you're grabbing it from, so that'll be from the server. The group is what permissions they have on this computer. Now you can change this later in case you wanna make an administrator or choose another, in case you make another group. But in this case, He's going to be a standard user. Now, there's this advanced tab where you can manage passwords, change advanced settings, and I'm not going to go into that. See, as you can tell, it pops up random things. In this case, that popped up users and groups, what you would be using if you had a, no or a normal computer that wasn't on the domain, or if you need to reactivate an account through the domain. And that's another story. Now, I'm going to click OK, and I'm just going to show you that user has been attached. So, I'm going to click Log Off here. Okay. Let's do Control Delete. Now it's going to pop up with Garrett, so we're going to click switch and choose other user. When you're on the domain, I'm going to go right back to the screen. When you're on the domain, uh, it doesn't actually show you the user's names. Now, if you're still logged in, it'll keep on showing that, that username. But since I logged off, that name will disappear after I choose other user. I'm going to go Bailey, and I'm going to log in here. And my numlock has been turned off on me. <laughs> Doop. Another setting that you'll notice uh, when, if you are remoting in or if you set up a computer on the domain, NumLock is usually by default turned off. So when somebody logs off, NumLock turns itself back off if it was on. Uh, you can change that settings and default policies. Now, right now, I'm just trying to show you that I can log in as Bailey. But that's how simple it is to uh, set up an active, uh, active Directory and a computer to attach to that Active Directory. Uh, in my previous tutorial, I showed you how to install it. So I hope that was helpful, and I hope this was helpful on showing you how to attach a computer and make users that can log on to that computer. Uh, currently, Windows Server 2012 can support all the way back to XP, last time I checked. Even though XP is extinct and you shouldn't be using it anymore, uh, the latest one, uh, the farthest back right now should be Vista that you can be using. Uh, that will be coming up on its due date sooner or later. And I think 2003 server has gone out of date, so please be aware of what you're using for this. In this case, I'm using a test route with the newest software. Uh, other than Windows 7, as you can tell here. Um, Windows 10 runs the same way. The network ID, settings, and all that has been passed down since XP. So you shouldn't run into any issue if you run through that. But uh, always be aware, you do need your DNS pointing back to your Active Directory server. And if there's any questions, please leave a comment at the end of this tutorial. Uh, send me a message, and I'll be happy to help you guys. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, if you liked the video, please leave a comment or uh, like below. Um, if you want to keep up with all activities on the channel, click subscribe. And if you would like to watch another video, there's some videos listed down below here. And thanks for watching.